Well, happy Tuesday. Uh, this is Rich Arbeck and welcome to my channel. Well, thank you for for watching. Today we have Mark Klein. I th I'm giving him a watch. I think he's very funny. My opinion, once again, watch it to be your own judge. These are just excerpts from his full act, about 38 minutes. It moved very quickly. I think you'll enjoy it. So, Mark, let's show him what you got. Thank you all so very much for coming out tonight. My name is Mark Klein. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. And when I travel, people always want to know, Mark, what is Kentucky all about? And this is what I tell them. Here's what we make in Kentucky. We make bourbon, we make baseball bats, we make cigarettes, we make fried chicken. <laughs> Our state motto is, if it kills you, we make it. <laughs> Things are going to change. Life is nothing but change. Some will amaze you. Some will amuse you. Some will appall you. Get the laughs where you can. And you watch yourself change in strange places. One of them is your wallet. You will get old in your wallet. When I was 25 years old, my wallet had ATM card, American Express Platinum card, Crown Club card from Delta Airlines, and about $1,000 in cash. Those days are long gone. I'm a 60-year-old man. Here's what's in my wallet now. Old fart cards, middle-age cards. Topping that list... Sam's club card. <laughs> don't ask me why, because I don't know why, but nothing in the world turns on a man my age more than getting a good deal on something at Sam's. <laughs> it's what we live for. Neither or not again at Sam's. Last week, I bought a 410-pound bag of rice for $1.37. <laughs> I don't like rice. I don't eat rice. I don't care. I had to have it. There's a card in my wallet sent to me by AAA, the American Automobile Association. Young folks get these cards too. Middle-aged men know how to use these cards. <laughs> I'm at the point in my life now I will call AAA for any reason whatsoever. I don't care anymore. I don't care. <laughs> Flat tire, sure. Out of gasoline, of course. If I have a bagel caught in my toaster, I call these people. I don't care anymore. <laughs> But it came last week in the mail. The top of the list, the creme de la creme. The greatest old fart card anyone will ever send me in my life. Any guess of what it was? AARP, yeah. nope, better than that. Cracker Barrel Frequent Diner card. <laughs> this is the greatest old fart restaurant of all time. I love Cracker Barrel. They love people like me right back. When you're old enough, they will pre-chew your food and spit it down your throat like a mother pelican. <laughs> I love it. I love the crack of barrel. The last time I went, the woman who took me to my table, an older woman, her name tag was in cuneiform on papyrus. <laughs> she takes me to my table, and then she did something so lovely, something I loved. She, she, she said, can I bring you some coffee, sweetie? <laughs> you call me sweetie in a restaurant, I'm 500 miles from home. I don't care if you're 85 years old, got a ballpoint pen stuck in the bun in your head. <laughs> you call me sweetie, I'm there. <laughs> change. Life is nothing but change. And so if you're going to change through life, and if you stay alive, you will, you find a role model. Someone who shows you how to age gracefully. My father passed away a year ago, October, age 92. My life's hero, my life's role model. I'll tell you a story about my dad. My mom and dad were married for 48 years when mom passed away, and that was 25 years ago. And of course, my dad got depressed, went into a shell. He did not want to go out or do anything. Then he made a choice. He made a conscious choice, a touching choice, a human and heroic choice. He chose to live again. He chose to be alive again. Her book of life was closed. His book of life was still open. He started going out again. I can tell you something. Women loved my dad. <laughs> Women absolutely loved my dad. Every week there'd be five or six ladies. They were all 85 years old. <laughs> They will call him. Let's go get supper. Let's go see a show. Let's go see a movie. I say, Pop, what's the appeal? What's making them so crazy for you? He said, I drive at night. <laughs> I 
I am a married man. I can sense the disappointment. <laughs> yes, ma'am, that's a joke. There's not a girl in the world disappointed that I'm already married. Well, I'm going to take that back. There is one. <laughs> we're opposites. Physically, we're opposite. You see me up here. I'm five feet, five inches tall, wearing cowboy boots. I weigh 151 pounds, so I'm built real short and kind of squatty. My wife is a 125-pound, 5-foot, 10-inch tall, green-eyed redhead. She towers over me as the angel of death. And I said one time, honey, does it ever bother you how much shorter I am than you are? She said, only when you can't go on the rides with me at the fair. Now, about our third date, she did ask me, why didn't my height intimidate you? And being a comic, you got to think on your feet a little bit. So I said, well, if your great beauty did not shoo me off, what makes you think your height would? <laughs> she said, keep talking, shorty. You're almost home. <laughs> but I'll tell you this. I've been married for 25 years. My wife walks in the room. My heart still skips a beat. That is true. You call it love, you call it fear. Doesn't much matter to me. I don't care. <laughs> only in species like humans, no other animal, only in humans do opposites attract and cohere. What makes that possible? Two things we do. Number one, we communicate. We over-communicate. We under-communicate. We constantly communicate. One of life's great lessons taught to be by my father, sometimes knowing when to stop communicating is every bit as important as knowing when to start. An example. Every man sitting in this room tonight at one point in his life has looked into the eyes of a woman he clearly adores. And with a straight face and sincere heart, he has asked of her the following question. Honey, are you mad? <laughs> and gentlemen, I can sure shoot and promise you, if you have to ask, she's mad. <laughs> Here's more bad news. Now she's mad because you had to ask her if she's mad. My father says, son, you reached that point. Stop communicating. Just shut up. I said, dad, why? He said, here's why. You're in a fight. You don't know it. And you've lost. <laughs> so I close my show with jokes. I love jokes. Old jokes. Jokes I didn't write. Jokes I collect from people just like yourselves. My family has favorite jokes. I hear jokes from people like you all. So when my show is over, want to come tell me your favorite joke? I'd love to hear it. Let's tell some jokes. My family's favorite jokes start with my brother Howard. He's an oral and maxillofacial surgeon back in Louisville, Kentucky, 45 year practice of surgery. His favorite joke's about a doctor. A man goes to a psychiatrist. Doctor, can you help me? He says, What's wrong? He said, I think I'm a dog. You what? I think I'm a dog. I bark at the moon, I roll on the grass, eat food from a dish. I tell you, Doctor, I think I'm a dog. Can you help me? Well, I don't know. Get on the couch and we'll talk about it. Oh, I'm not allowed on the couch. <laughs> They don't get any better, man. There's just more of them, all right? So don't worry about that. <laughs> my sister, Michelle, we call her Mickey, but her given name's Michelle. She's the smartest person in my family by daylight. She's very smart, retired college professor, summa cum laude graduate from Tufts University, just published in the Ellery Queen Mystery Magazine. Her favorite joke's a very smart joke. Why did Mozart hate chickens? Why did Mozart hate chickens? All day long, bock, 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 bock. <laughs> I'm married into a family who's got a great sense of humor. I don't tell mother-in-law jokes. I don't tell them on stage or off stage. I'll tell you why that is. When my own mother died, my mother-in-law became to our family the mother that my real mom would have been. So out of love and respect for my mother-in-law, I don't tell jokes about her. But she has a favorite joke that I can tell you. So here's my mother-in-law's favorite joke. A man takes three women to his mother's house for lunch one day. They have lunch and they go home. 
He goes, Mama, what do you think of the girls? She goes, they're beautiful girls. He goes, I'm going to marry one of them. She goes, oh, I know. You're going to marry the tall redhead, the one in the middle. He said, that's right. How did you know that? She goes, I didn't like her. <laughs> My father-in-law, the late Captain Jack Ward out of Port Savannah, Georgia, ex shrimpo captain. This is his favorite joke. Couple driving on the highway. The husband's driving. The wife is hard of hearing. She's kind of deaf. He's behind the wheel. He checks his rear view mirror, sees a flashing blue police light, pulls his car to the side of the road. Policeman walks up, says, let me see your license. She said, what did he say? He wants to see my license, honey, and he hands it up. Policeman goes, well, it says so you live in Savannah, Georgia. She said, what did he say? He sees we're from Savannah, dear. The cop laughs. He goes, I'm going to tell you a funny story. The meanest woman I've ever met in my life was from Savannah, Georgia. She said, what did he say? He said, he thinks he knows you. <laughs> and who knows how much I cleaned that joke up for the dry bar comedy special tonight. <laughs> Learn your family's histories. Learn your family's stories. Learn your family's jokes. You are the only animal in the history of life on earth that laughs. So laugh every day. It's good for you. Releases every chemical in your brain that's good for you and none of the ones that are bad. You've been a joy to entertain tonight, and I thank you so much for spending your time with me. Good night. Thanks. <laughs>